Mr. Speaker, I rise in strong opposition to this closed rule uh, and to the misguided underlying legislation. Mr. Speaker, enough is enough. Enough political posturing, enough governing by press conference, enough finger-pointing press releases, Facebook updates and tweets. Democrats have already agreed reluctantly to tens of billions of dollars in cuts. Many of these cuts are from programs that are very near and dear to us. We have come more than halfway. And I'm pleased that Speaker Boehner agreed to attend a negotiating session with President Obama and Senator Reid last night. The truth, Mr. Speaker, is that it shouldn't be this hard to come up with a budget to finish this year. President Obama and, Se and Senator Reid are trying to work with Speaker Boehner to come up with a bipartisan agreement that moves this country forward. But that's not what we see coming from the Republican Party in the House. Unfortunately, as of right now, the Republican leadership is continuing with their my way or the highway obstructionism. But let's be clear about what's really going on here. Let's at least be straight with the American people. This impasse is not because of disputes between Democrats and Republicans. It's because of an intra-party feud between sensible, pragmatic Republican legislators and angry, take-no-prisoner Republican activists. Now, I, I know that many of my friends on the other side of the aisle would like to accept the billions and billions of dollars in cuts that the Democrats have offered and declare victory. Unfortunately, their Republican Party has been hijacked by people who relish a shutdown of, of the federal government, people who refuse to take yes for an answer. They are more interested in making a point than in making law. And unless and until the Republican leadership in, the, in, in this House is willing to stand up to that radical element and stop moving the goalposts, we will not be able to move forward. Now, my friends on the other side of the aisle talk a good game about wanting to come up with a compromise. Unfortunately, this bill before us today does nothing to achieve that goal. In fact, it is a step backwards. This bill, like H.R. 1 before it, isn't going anywhere. The Senate leadership and the White House have already made it very clear that yet another short-term continuing resolution is not acceptable. Further, this bill continues the misguided priorities that we have seen from re the Republican leadership of the House for the last several months. It cuts vital domestic programs that families, communities, and states rely on during these difficult economic times. Now, let me just give you a few examples of the cuts to programs that will, be directly, that, what will, that will directly affect the people in Massachusetts that I'm honored to represent. H.R. 1363 would cut the Land and Water Conservation Fund, which helps preserve open space by another $71.5 million. It cuts $700 million from the clean water and drinking water revolving funds. I don't know of a community in this country that doesn't have infrastructure needs. And the state revolving fund is one of the few areas where they can get money to help repair sores and uh, deal with storm water and a whole bunch of other issues. But they cut it by $700 million more. And most egregiously of all, it cuts $390 million from LIHEAP, from the LIHEAP contingent fuel assistance for poor people, mostly elderly, uh, who need it as, fuel, as we see fuel prices continue to rise. So there it is, Mr. Speaker. There's the clear difference in priorities between the two parties. The Republicans would rather shut down the government than provide heating assistance to some of the most vulnerable people in this country. I should also note that this bill would provide funding for the Department of Defense for the rest of the year, but nothing else. Every member of this House believes that making sure our troops get their paychecks is a top priority. The men and women who serve this country in uniform deserve our support. But Mr. Speaker, so do the seniors of this country. So do the children of this country. So do the poor and the hungry of this country. So do the people who can't afford hotshot lobbyists and multi-million dollar ad campaigns. We're supposed to represent them too. A couple of days ago, we saw where the Republican priorities are. They made them crystal clear in their budget proposal. Eliminate Medicare as we know it. Eviscerate Medicaid. Cut funding for education. Cut funding for medical research, health care, environmental protection, and infrastructure in order to make sure that the wealthiest individuals and companies can keep their special interest tax breaks. Oil companies continue to get their taxpayer subsidies. Why, I don't know. Why they need them, I don't know, but they continue to get them and they're protected. Donald Trump continues to get his tax cut under their proposal. But they go after programs that impact working people and people who are the most vulnerable. That may fly, fly on Wall Street, but it sure isn't going to fly on Main Street. 
So again, Mr. Speaker, I say that enough is enough. It is time for serious people to do some serious legislating. The bill before us is a million miles away from that. Um, I would urge my colleagues to reject this closed rule and to reject the underlying legislation, and I reserve the balance of my time.